Hey, this is Buck Paddle Dust. Thank you for joining me for episode 9 of my Rimworld Colony playthrough. And this is the penultimate episode. Tomorrow's episode will be the last one. Uh, episode 10, where we'll cover some mods, how to install them, uh, where to find them, and also the mods that I recommend. Just, um, I very much don't like mods that uh, change the actual core gameplay itself. I just like the, the mods that make my life a little bit easier, quality of life mods, things that show me a little bit more on the UI, or make it clear if people are having mental breaks, or maybe show this the temperature in two different settings, centigrade and Fahrenheit, for instance. So um, those are the mods that I'll be showing you. Your mileage may vary. Perhaps you want to change the game and, and allow all sorts of other things to happen. It's entirely up to you. There's lots of mods to choose from, so I'll be covering that in episode 10. Thank you to everybody who has uh, commented and contributed over the past uh, couple of days. Um, thank you to Artemis, who correctly pointed out that although I added the schedule for the Night Owl here, <laughs> what I didn't do was remove his sleeping uh, requirement for the, the actual night. So that doesn't work very well. Um, however, let me just um, check this out. I think that should work quite nicely. And uh, let me put in recreation for these people as well. Make sure they're doing recreation. Sometimes it's nice if everyone had, does recreation together. There's additional benefits to that as well. Thanks for Artemis. Um, good call for Elise Eclectic, who actually correctly pointed out that, honestly, button-down shirts are a bit better than T-shirts in terms of protection. So T-shirts only cost, um, let's have a quick click here, 40 ingredients. Button-down shirts, on the other hand, cost 45 now, there's a little bit more uh, to spend on the button-down shirts, but it is worth it because they do cover two extra areas um, of your body than T-shirts do. I think it's neck and and arms. That's correct. Yeah, neck and arms, which means that you're protected a little bit further from people hitting you. Now, if it's just made of cloth, then obviously it's not going to be a big difference, but you can get a little bit of extra protection. And honestly, every little does help. So thank you to Elise for pointing out. I've never really given it too much thought, um, but certainly make button-down shirts if, if you can afford them rather than uh, t-shirts all right cool uh, thank you also to pen pen 35 who said um with the caravan that we had in the last game they're on their way back now having uh, successfully picked up the two um, neuroformers he said well actually could we not stop on on the way home at this town here and maybe do some trading now the answer is yes absolutely unfortunately the town um is minus 80 um, and so I don't really think they are going to want to trade with us. Now, if the town was the purple one, so if they're neutral or in a plus, they would trade with us. But um, I think the only option that we're going to get here is to fight with them, uh, which is not really what, what we want to do. So uh, we will um, just carry on back to base. We are going past them. But yeah, absolutely. Caravans are not just one shot deals. You can, you know, once a caravan is formed, you can take stop offs. You can go to different places before you come back to where you initially headed. OK, so it's not far and forget. Caravans can, can be split. You can actually settle a hex as well. So if you wanted to start a second colony, you just literally click on this settle button and you would start a second colony here. So just bear that in mind. All right. That's good. Um, we are in relatively good shape. We've got some harvest coming in. We have, um, we've got a couple of research benches up for extra research speed. We're now researching long blades, which we can use to better arm our colonists with. We have, uh, we've got some metal, we've got components, not many components. We need to get more than this, but obviously we haven't mined any components out yet whatsoever. Oh, apart from the ones here, I think it was. So that's something you probably want, want to bear in mind. All right. Now we were building our uh, defences, we're starting to build our defences, so we really want to take keep an eye on our stone cutting. I wouldn't really build walls out of... Oh, we had a social fight. Come on guys, get over it. You're having a party and everything. <laughs> What's a party of that fight, right? So I'd try and build them out of limestone and granite, maybe, rather than slate and marble. But just for the purposes of this, I will carry on making these out of marble. Marble's what we have. But normally I wouldn't build perimeter walls out of marble. Use those for inside and for bedrooms and things. Um, I also potentially would only use steel door or better on the, on your external doors as well. Door opening speed is is quite important. Now stone doors don't open very quickly. Uh, wooden doors will open, I think, the quickest, followed by steel doors. But obviously, wooden doors are not that powerful uh, in terms of hit points or strong. Should I say? I think powerful is the wrong word. 
All right, so Nelson is doing some work here, and again, it's in the dark, so his um, his speed is going to be greatly reduced. We could pop a light in here, actually. We could actually take a light from here. Just have a quick look. And this is something that you might want to do, is rather than build a light, I'm just going to reinstall this light in here to make Nelson's um, subsequent building a lot quicker. So I'm now going to get Nelson to fetch this light and put it in there. Perfect. So now his, his building of the floors will be much quicker. Meanwhile, we'll just queue up a light to be built out here, the, the one we took in the first place. This is a hospital, so we're going to put in beds in here and things. So let's queue those up as well. Let's queue up some beds. So we're going to put one there, one there, one there, one there as well. Now, the end tables, um, you can get... Each bed will share an end tables buff. Um, next to the head, so you, only, you don't need one in the middle here because this is obviously getting a benefit from that. And I'd very much recommend putting a couple of shelves in here as well. Um, shelves to hold the medicine in. Ah, I think I must have queued up a light to be built in here and I just didn't notice it. <laughs> so let's let's reinstall this light back again, seeing as we have uh, a light in here already now. We don't need a second one. So you can build a couple of shelves in here. Now the benefit of shelves is that you can use these to store medicine on. Why would you put them on a shelf? Because if medicines are just left on the ground, like here, for instance, we will see... Uh, where are we? Oops, that one. That there's, you, you get a, a, a penalty to the beauty because they're all on the floor. Anything that is on a shelf, including a dead body, doesn't pick up any uh, beauty debuffs, which is pretty cool. So we shall see that momentarily. And also having medicine in the hospital makes absolute sense. It means that you're treating people immediately. You won't have to wander off to the storeroom to pick up medicine and then bring it back again which is no good in the event of somebody who's bleeding out very quickly and potentially could die if we don't get the, the help quickly enough. All right, first bed is up. The good thing to do is mark it medical, just to, just to mark it um, so we know it's the hospital. And also um, pawns will then go to medical beds as a priority over their own beds. If no beds are mar marked as medical, they will go to their own beds instead. So Ara here he got into the social fight and has gone to the medical bed rather than Ara's own bed. Sleeping bag, <laughs> even. All right. Now there's no harm in actually allowing Finley and Nelson to sleep in here because at least they're sleeping on a bed, right? And well, in fact, Ara as well. So the three of them, you could actually say, Do you know what, don't miss the hospital just yet, but we're gonna allow uh, Finley. Where are we? Ara, I'm gonna put Finley in here as well. So, oops, go back. Uh, Finley, Ara, Finley, Ara, and who's the other one? The, uh, the other one was Nelson. All right, so set owner, Nelson, there. So they're, they're now in a dormitory, and we can just take these down. So John now will, will get the benefit of sleeping in his own room, with nobody else in there. And we'll get some spare bedrolls, which are great for when we do um, caravans. You obviously want to take bedrolls with you, so everyone's happy. All right, so we're uh, cutting stone, plenty of stone being made, lots of uh, lots of granite here, which is fab. And bearing in mind that we haven't started on the wall, what I'd be inclined to do now then, given this is the case, we have more granite, is I'd now start to use granite. We have 176 bits of granite. So we've got uh, 45, 45, 90, 105, perfect. All right, so lots of busy work going on. Got another harvest coming in of, ri of uh, rice there, which is great. So the corn is um, being built here. This is, well, grown, built. <laughs> build corn, you grow corn. Now, the trouble with um, growing uh, fields out in the middle of nowhere like this is that the animals will sometimes come and eat your crops. So it's extremely likely here that what's happened, because this is all going to grow at the same speed, it's possible that some of these crops have got eaten and been replanted. So you need to keep an eye on that and preferably put them behind walls if you can. Okay, good. So our caravan is back on the map, as we can see. Yay. Now, there's something you need to be aware of. So the donkey is carrying a lot of your gear. Now, donkeys, the, sorry, the hauling animals that have got the gear on, you can see they've got like a, the, the bags on, they'll get unpacked in due course. But a lot of the time they'll be wandering around with all this stuff on and nobody's actually um, taking it off them. So what you can do just to speed things along a little is we're going to create a zone for the donkey or for any pack animal, manage areas, new area, we'll call it unload. And what we'll do is we'll do it ourselves manually because it's going to be a darn sight quicker. And I think it's a hauling job, you see. So, and because hauling is right down the end here, generally people don't get to it very quickly. So we'll put, um, we'll, put we'll create this zone here. So we create the zone. We're going to expand the zone, unload, and we're just going to put it in here. 
So now what we're going to do, let's just make sure I've done that. Yeah. So now what we're going to do, we're going to change the donkey zone to unload. And now the donkey will now come to here. Okay. Now, then the way to do it manually, you just click on these down. And you'll notice this stuff will start to appear. Perfect. And then don't forget to zone the donkey back again to herbivores. All right. So all this stuff will get moved to the right place, but largely a lot of this is for us to sell. All right, good. Now, let's clear up clear up this blood. Got some blood everywhere, that's no good. All right, so Silink Neuroformers. These are the bits and pieces that we picked up from the quest. Let me show you how this works. Now, what a Silink Neuroformer will do is it will give you uh, a level of side casting. So if you're if you don't have any Psycast at all, you'll get a level 1 Psycast from Neuroformer. If you're level 1 already, which I think it was one of these chaps, can't remember which one, there you go, UG, you'll get a second level. And you're doing this without having to use the Empire to grant you those Psycasts. Do you remember the, uh, the Bestower appeared and they did a ceremony and you get to a second level? Well, these things mean that you don't have to go through the Empire to get your second level of Psycasts. So, let me demonstrate. Let's have a quick look at, um, yeah, so let's do Fleming. We'll get Fleming to use a Silink. Boink. So, Fleming now has the ability to cast the Burden spell, I suppose, at level 1. Now, so he now has the Psy Focus bar, which you can move up and move down. And if you remember, um, if you missed the explanation that I gave on uh, how this works, um, go back and have a look at the, um, the video I did a couple of episodes ago. Uh, it's, it's got the word royalty in the title. Um, basically, these, um, in, in a nutshell, your heat is a temporary buildup of heat when you cast spells, and Psy Focus is like the fuel. Now, your fuel can only be recharged by meditating. So you need to make sure that Fleming now has meditation in his, in his um, schedule here. So we'll put in fl uh, meditation in place of, uh, in place of recreation, because it does grant the uh, same bonus as recreation does. It'll give you your, your recreation skill, but in this instance, it will also ref refill your Psy Focus bar. No Psy Focus, no spells. And I need to do the same to also the other person who had the skill. I can't remember who it was now. Is it Gizmo? Hang on, one of these guys, wasn't it? Eugene. So I need to do the same with Eugene. So Eugene really should also be meditating where possible. Um, yeah, I've done that wrong, actually. I copied... <laughs> I'll be the one above it. Right, let me just set this back to anything, which it should be. That's perfect. All right, good. Cool. So meditating gives you recreation, um, and you don't need to do meditating unless you unless you have, or specifically unless you want to, of course, unless you've got a side focus skill to, to build back up again. Now, what we can do with, um, with Eugene is we can actually get him to use this to get a second skill, like a level two skill, which is a little bit more powerful. So we'll do that when he wakes up. Actually, so you can see here that um, it's telling us Fleming needs a meditation spot. So we'll actually build a copy of that, stick it in Fleming's room here, um, and we'll set the owner to be Fleming. Now, if you, you may recall that you can check what people's um, preferable meditation focus type is. In this instance, it has to be a sculpture or a stele to get um, uh, a, a better boost. So meditating at something which is not preferred um, will be fine. This will build up very slowly. So what we need to do is really get a, a statue of some sort put in the rec room, because not only will it boost the rec room's beauty, it means that Fleming and... Uh, who is this? Fleming and... Who's the other person with the school? Eugene um, can have uh, a place to meditate at. I need to set this to be Eugene. There we go. So I think it's probably time to build an art bench. Now, art benches are actually quite important. They seem to be quite, mm, you know, what's the point? Art is very, very good at making a room beautiful uh, and thus um, making everybody happy. People will get a, a buff for having a slightly impressive rec room, as we can see. Now, this only gets better if you get an impressive rec room. It's like five or six, you know, to extremely impressive. And you do that just by, by keeping it clean, adding art and, you know, beautiful things to it. It's pretty straightforward. So... Eugene is now awake. Eugene has the skill that he got through the Empire, but as we're uh, enemies with the Empire, that's not going to work anymore. So we're actually going to get Eugene to level up to upgrade his science to level two. Doink. As we can see, he's got the ability to water skip, dowsing in a target area in water. Now, 
This largely doesn't have a lot of point to it unless you're putting out fires, but it is actually pretty cool. And if you want to see what it looks like, I will show you. It's actually quite good. So you do water skip, you choose a area, and it covers it in water. So you can use it for putting out fires. You notice the heat goes up and it's now coming down. Yeah. So water skip's not bad. It's not the worst, it's not the best. And you'll see that Eugene is now meditating to refill his side focus back up to the, des the desired amount. And also to gain recreation from it. As you can see, this is the green arrow he's just building up now. All right, so there we go. So we're gonna build the art bench now and we're gonna roll out a couple of art items. So. In the same way as any other production table, we're going to make a small sculpture. We're going to make um, one of them, we'll put it in the, in the rec room, and uh, we'll just do one. And we're going to make it out of, what should we make it out of? Let's have a look. So we can make it out of the stone block. Let's say we're going to make it out of marble, because um, we, we do have a lot of marble, don't we? So we're going to make it out of marble, and we're going to make one sculpture, it's going to need 50. So actually, maybe, maybe we can make two of them. All right. The other thing to check finally is that we've got somebody doing art. Uh, he's got 14 skill. We're going to get Gizmo to do that, I think. That's uh, that's actually quite important. Let me make sure that that happens before he does research. So Gizmo should come and work on this. There we go. It's working on it straight away. And you'll see just how, how nice having a marble statue is. The only thing better than marble, I believe, is jade. I could be wrong on that, but jade certainly is at the top of the tree to make statues out of. And jade you can dig out of the mountain somewhere. There'll be like a bright green area which is not always visible so we shall see it doesn't look like there's any jade on this map no, can't see anything all right so we'll let that run i'm going to slow this down just a sec i noticed earlier that um, i hadn't set up the work schedule no i have i thought i didn't hmm. okay all right so everyone's kind of chilling out we're going to make this back into a bedroom i think uh because we can that's the old prison but certainly because we've got so many people somebody can sleep in there if they want to and it just makes it one less person in here in fact what you could do just to if you want to be a little bit clever is we have two night owls right fleming and nelson now nelson is here so night owls are likely to be disturbed by other people who are up and about when they're sleeping in the daytime so i might set nelson to be in here and that's going to wake him up and move him straight away but that's that's okay i'm going to move this table out of here for now um, because people are going to come in here and disturb him. So this is not an ideal setup, it's not very efficient. Do you know, I'm, I'm just going to leave it in there. But normally you would not put a table in someone's bedroom for this reason. So just bear that in mind. I'm leaving it here just for now, uh, because we're almost at the, the end of this uh, this run through. But you, you take my point. Okay, so the, um, the, the shelves are built and they do default to a certain type of storage. Normally weapons for some reason. Usually because most people do store uh, weapons on shelves but what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to change this we want medicine on here we're going to make it critical right it's critical that our hospital has medicine on the shelves so they must be put here first and then they can be put in here whose priority is only normal so to save us doing this every time we want to make a shelf in the hospital which now because we set this to what we want it to be we click on copy settings click on this shelf and click on paste settings and you'll notice over here that medicine is now over here and it's picked up the same settings as what we copied it from. So somebody will now come, take this off, and move these medicines from here up onto here. And any subsequent medicines we get will be put on the shelves here, and then be placed into here. The other thing we want to do is put out our steel mini turret. Absolutely. Um, at, the, at the moment, it doesn't really matter where it goes. Bearing in mind that turrets can explode if and when they um, uh, get damaged. So you can put it there. It's covering a decent amount of, of range, and we also then need to run some power out to it. Probably along here, I guess. And it will just stretch across there. And be powered up when, when they put it out. Alright, good. Happy with that. So, we've covered um, quite a bit there, by the looks of it. And really, I think everyone's itching to open this up now. So I think time to open up the Ancient Danger. It could be any one of a number of things in here. What I'd like to do is um, make some traps. Now traps are really, really good at causing a lot of damage. <laughs> so we have a lot of granite trap, a lot of granite blocks, sorry. So I think we're going to make some out of granite. These do take a lot of time to build, but they do a lot of damage. So I'm going to put, spread some along here, I think. Oh, we've got lots of hurt heel root out here. We'll definitely uh, harvest that in. Also these strawberry plants. Absolutely. 
they do take a long time to build as we can see there's a lot of work put into it's because they're made of stone basically but the damage they do is much better than wood if you want to know more about traps just have, have a look in the wikipedia and it lists out the different types of material and the amount of damage that they do generally speaking in rimworld if something takes longer to make it's because it's a lot more effective or it's more powerful or you know something along those lines all right, so we finished a research of long blades. Now, this is um, this is quite important, if I'm being honest, because it means that we can now equip um, our our people with long swords, and also we need to be making simple helmets as well. Simple helmets was something that we could make as soon as this was uh, was created. I just didn't mention it. <laughs> so you really want to make simple helmets for everybody. So three, uh, not not the guests, of course. One, so we've got five people. Someone's got a helmet already. But it's good practice just to say, right. So do until you have five helmets and again we're going to do this again so it automatically makes them for everybody so as long as you have a helmet that's 52 or above count equipped no one has a simple helmet equipped so it's going to make five so that's perfect going to make it out of steel which is great also we want to make a long sword now i'm pretty sure that some of our people have got rubbish weapons so we've got uh, who's our melee people we should make sure jonathan's not a fighter he's not okay so we've got somebody with a knife and yeah okay so stranger who's got a knife we're going to make them a long sword. Long swords are really good, really good damage. Um, so just make one, that's fine. We're going to make it out of steel. We don't want to make it out of the other things we haven't got enough. You don't have to deselect them, but um, if you have enough plasteel and enough uranium, you may end up getting it made out of out of them. If you don't want that to happen, make sure you deselect them. You want to make it out of steel. We don't have much steel left by the looks of it. So I've set um, I've set this area to be deconstructed. Where's it gone? I think it's been deconstructed already. Wow, they don't muck about. It was just here. <laughs> and now we know what we need to do is start mining uh, some of the steel so we can uh, keep that uh, keep that bill fed. All right. So again, one of our traps. The traps are almost done. Yeah, so one thing to point out also is that be careful that um, you don't think that smithing is a crafting job. I mean, on the face of it, it sounds like it's the right thing, but it's not. Smithing actually takes a higher priority. So anybody who's crafting, you want to make sure that um, their smithing is set to maybe the same level or higher. Otherwise, they may focus on other jobs that they've been assigned to, maybe like stone cutting or whatever. Stone cutting comes after craft. If in doubt, just hover. You see smithing? Yep. It also counts for fabricating things as well, and also the machine table, which we haven't got to yet. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So the smithing will begin when Gizmo... Um, actually, not Gizmo. Who do we want to set this to? Let's have a look. We'll probably get Stranger to do that. Stranger's... Um, Mm, not a very good skill level at that. Eight, three. So we probably want Nelson to do it, actually. Yeah, we'll get Nelson to do that because his skill's better. So Nelson should get to that if there's nothing to construct. So we'll see that happen in a minute, hopefully. Meanwhile, lots and lots of food coming in. You may want to consider at this point um, making this a bit bigger. So that's probably not a bad idea. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate the, uh, the chimney structure that I mentioned earlier on. Um, I wouldn't necessarily build it like this, but I want to give you the idea of what I meant. So raiders, they will focus on these vents and they'll wreck them. And this does two things. Firstly, it gives them a hole through the wall, gives them a point in. This is a, very, this is a weak spot, basically. They can set fire to these. They can punch, punch through them. They don't have a lot of hit points. Uh, and also, if, if, you, if you've got coolers, they're there for a reason. So whatever it is that they are cooling or heating, well, that's not going to work anymore. So this is why you want to make a chimney like this. So what I'm going to do, I'll put on the wall and a door. Um, and I'm also now going to make sure this doesn't get roofed. I've done that there already. And we'll see. And I'll see. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get to this. Meanwhile, the spike traps are almost built. As soon as they're built, we'll do the Ancient Danger Raid. Now, it looks like Stranger's focusing on the crafting here. This is what I mentioned or it looks like yeah Nelson is busy constructing. I'm gonna try and I'm try and get this uh, this long sword made before we do the ancient danger rates. So I think melee is gonna be quite important here. So that spike trap is done. Perfect. Alright, so the small sculpture has been made, uh, which is great. Now, what's nice about sculptures is that actually this is a good one, which is cool. You can click on the art button and you'll get um, sometimes a quite amusing description of, of what's been actually made. So in this instance, uh, nothing particularly amusing. I'm going to install that in the rec room. Now you'll notice the rec room is currently slightly impressive. As soon as that is installed, let me just... Um, why is he walking so slowly? Interesting. Stab scar. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, if we just get him to install that, he'll do that now for us. There we go. We we'll see it moves to somewhat impressive, so it's actually jumped up a level, and we can see why. It's because this is actually giving 136 beauty to the room for the cost of 50 marble. It's not much, is it? That. So bear that in mind. If you can make this rec room extremely impressive, all your colonists will be getting a buff for very, very little effort. It's certainly worth bearing in mind. See? Somewhat impressive dining room. It has gone, actually gone up by one. So, yeah. It's worth doing. Bear that in mind. Art is good. What it means, of course, is that we can now put the two people here who want um, decent art to meditate at we can actually put them over here so Fleming and Eugene let me just take those away and we'll make these to be uh, Eugene and also Fleming so now they'll be chuffed a bit because they are then meditating at an, something artistic which is what they wanted so all good right so the long sword is being built I'm tempted to kind of just skip forward and just wait till the long sword's built and equipped and then we will take on the ancient danger. So Nelson's about to finish the longsword, which he has now done. And it is a normal longsword, so it's not good or excellent or anything like that. But that's fine. And we'll get Stranger to pick that up as soon as he's dropped it off. Beautiful. So we'll give Stranger the steel longsword, which he's come to get. Excellent. That makes her a lot more potent in combat now. I've also started the building of the granite north wall, which we're going to kind of run along and probably down here. And then we'll have a pretty decent perimeter. Uh, you then start to think about your defensive structure, where you're going to have your kill bots. Um, and I'll point out a couple of things about that when it's done. But what we're going to do now is we are going to bust open the ancient danger. So let's make sure everyone has a weapon. This is very, very important. And there's a mod to make this easier. But we can see here either uh, down at the bottom of the screen or under your gear setting, we can see that everyone's got a weapon who is able to use one. Yep. And then they've, they've got terrible weapons, but it doesn't matter so much. All right, cool. All right, let's do this then. So we're going to summon everybody. Put them over here. All right. So we're going to get Choniartes, who's here. We're going to get him to go probably over here, actually. Now, these guys are going to wait around the corner. Remember, the melee fighters go at the front. So, Stranger, we're going to have... Go there. Nelson, weapons, yep, okay, Gizmo goes back one, which I'm down there. Now, Eugene does not have a particularly offensive uh, lineup of uh, size skills. Now, Fleming's burden could be quite useful, so we'll use that and we'll bear it in mind. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to crack open the Ancient Danger and try and lure anybody inside to come out over these traps. This can be quite effective. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is actually probably move everybody down one. So rather than sit here and try and fire at my people, they're going to come around and try and engage them. What Choniartes is going to do is fire at the wall to take it down. I'd like to make sure that Shelley does not follow us in combat. So making sure that that is clicked off, it means that Shelley won't follow us in combat, which is fine. I don't want Shelley to get in the way. So we can watch the marble wall getting blown down here. Right, let's slow it down slightly. And we will see what is behind the wall here. Could be many things. All right. Okay, so in this instance, we have <laughs> a mega screen television. Now, cracking these things open is very much like, like opening loot boxes. You don't really know what you're going to get inside. Sometimes it's amazing. Other times it's kind of all right. Flat screen TV is, is okay. It's going to be easy recreation for people, you know, in the rec room here. I'll show you how to set it up. It's quite easy. Now, what we've got here, we've got two mechs. Now, these mechs are not at all scary. They have long range, quite well, quite quick firing guns all right so at a distance these things are a bit of a nightmare up close uh, and in melee they're really nothing to worry about what you've got to do with these guys is lure them into a melee combat and they are toast choniartes i'm going to run him around a corner here he may pick up a hit or two i'm hoping his armor will hold we shall see so they've triggered one of these already and it's done quite a bit of damage he's going to pick up a hit Oh, no, he made it. He made it. So as these guys get... Oh, look, he's... Oh, he's a bit clever. He's going up and round. Okay. Hmm. Clever, clever. All right, let's, let's run everybody around a corner here. So one of them might, might pick up a shot from him. Nope, he missed. Okay, so... Now, depending on, on the AI, sometimes they'll wander around all of these spike traps. In this case, it hasn't happened. 
But that's okay. I'm curious to see where they're going, actually. Looks like they're going all the way around. Hmm. Interesting. All right, do you know what, though? That's fine. We can we can, we can can be clever as well. Let's just... Uh, let's take this down. Oops, hang on. Ready, fight. They might just come back on themselves. Now, what, what they're probably going to do is go around and, and try and set fire to something or, or wreck my... Oh, I didn't see... Right, okay. I think what they might be doing is targeting these traps for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. But this is the other thing. Let the AI do the work for you. This could be quite amusing. I, sus I suspect these guys are going to get to range, shoot at these guys, and these guys will go and kill them. Now, it's a bit of a win-win for us, because if they engage the, the, um, the, the, the pikemen, it's possible that one of these muffalos will get shot and either killed or downed, in which case they will basically wander off and not worry too much about it, and then we can loot. <laughs> we can loot these guys. <laughs> it's a win-win, trust me. All right. So let's keep an eye on what these guys are doing. Let's speed things up a little bit. Okay, cool. So the reason I did this is because I didn't want to go around the outside and potentially be in range of this guy at the back. Now, what's in here? You've got these crypto sleep caskets. These can be opened and these will contain what, what we call ancient soldiers. These will either be completely naked and comatose or mostly comatose, or they might come out with weapons and start firing. Either way, there's a couple of ways to deal with these people, and it's not that difficult. Let me just move our guys in. This is what's going to happen. So this pikeman will engage these chaps, and then he's going to get the them to aggro them. It's going to be quite a fight. I'm inclined to turn my turret to hold fire. Because if your turret hits any of these guys, what will happen is they will now have a, a, bad, a bad standing towards you, or a worse standing. Which you don't want, because they're currently your allies. Alright, cool. Let's just watch the fun and games. There you go, see? He's engaging. This is the, the, the bit about Rimmel that I enjoy the most, is watching the AI fight the AI, especially if you're doing work for them. Now, this is not a good idea against the pikemen. You engage them in melee combat as soon as you can, but, yeah, it's fine. They've got a lot more weapons than this chap has. This one's very slow, because he got damaged by our, our trap. All right, anyway. Okay, so going back to this. Now, what we're going to do is there's a few ways of dealing with these people. Normally, you can just move everybody out. In fact, let's let's do that. Let's leave Fleming here, and we'll move these guys out. Oh, Jonathan, you come out as well. We're going to try and soak these up these guys up by the traps once more. We built the traps, might as well use them. We're going to get Fleming to shoot at the casket. Oh, maybe he can't do it from there. Shoot at the casket. There we go. You can either go here and click on open or just shoot at it. So we shall see. Okay. In this instance, we've got a couple of people have fallen out. There's no weapons or armour, but all you've got to do is rescue them. And the chances of them joining you are actually quite high. And the other thing that you can do is actually deconstruct these now. Um, and that will work quite nicely. So what's happened here? So, okay, we're still fighting this one. It looks like this chap's coming back to try and engage us, and that's fine. So at this point, you can rescue these people. So Shackleford is ugly, gay. He's very good at intellectual and animal. Well, animals, he's got a burning desire, but he'd be very good for intellectual. And Dwee is a creepy, breathing, body purist cannibal. <laughs> He's also very good at uh, medical, social and intellectual, which is... So they're not bad characters, honestly. I, um, if we were playing on with this colony, I'd definitely uh, take, take these two and I'd try and patch them up and rescue them. As I said, you, you can you can deconstruct this, and to give you some idea of what you'd expect, we'll we'll do that. Now this trap's coming back, so let's hide around the corner. Again, you, you don't want to take this guy at range. Now what's happened here is this one's dead. Okay, so he's decided to go back round. It's fine. So we can see here you get some uranium and some steel. Uh, so that's actually pretty nice. All right. Well, I think that's probably pretty much it in terms of. Um, what I need to show you. We've got a sort of self-sustaining colony off the ground now and certainly where I go from here is probably um, I'll definitely get machining um, and then flak armor. Machining is very very useful. You, you start making weapons and grenades and other bits and pieces. Flak armor is critical for the flak vest, flak pants potentially and also flak helmet if you want to make them. I find simple helmets suffice so just crack out a load of these at the bench here, which we're doing. Um, 
which is what's being made here actually they're starting to make all the super helmets now make sure everyone's supplied with simple helmets if you want to make flak helmets absolutely fine I think you need to make those at the machining table if I remember correctly uh, but but certainly I would aim next thing I'd go for now is machining flak armor maybe gunsmithing but I wouldn't focus trying to get up here too far make sure that none of the none of the items down here are ones that you really want devil strand is really good for making um, a very tough material you can make armor out of it uh, you know devil strand coats devil strand trousers very very effective so don't underestimate this just take a long time to uh, to build uh, to grow i keep saying build for plants <laughs> um, drug production also very good here psychite refining means you can make psychite tea uh, which is sorry psychite brewing means you can make psychite tea you just need to grow the plants first that's very much useful if you don't want to use drugs you can make them to sell also very useful panoxycyline is, is critical um, for the game in my opinion you want to get this as soon as you can and it stops your guys catching certain illnesses so this is not to be underestimated either but certainly just um you know carry on and have some fun i mean i wouldn't bother with mortars as raids go on raids will come to you with mortars you can capture you can potentially capture mortars from pirate bases, so I wouldn't bother with that. Turrets, I think they're a little bit overrated myself, and again, I probably wouldn't rush to get gun turrets. You can capture them easily enough on raids. I've always found turrets to be a bit questionable. Once you get decent melee fighters, turrets become a bit pointless in your kill box, but they do act as a distraction, so your mileage may may vary with what you feel is, uh, is useful with turrets. It's entirely up to you. Your playstyle may be completely different. You may rely on turrets heavily. That's absolutely fine. Um, jump packs are seriously useful very very useful to have um, transport pods definitely go for transport pods transport pods will open up your ability to move around the map significantly you know you can if you want to raid somebody you can just transport pod over and caravan back or if you have the fast skip skill you can transport pod over and fast skip back you know transport pods open up a whole new world of possibilities so I definitely aim for transport pods that's just some ideas. Anyway, look, I hope this has been useful. The next episode is going to contain uh, mods, and it's not going to focus on this colony anymore. But I hope I've given you some useful tips. Um, there's lots and lots of ways that you can play this. You know, you may not like my layout. Fair enough, I completely get that. Um, but there's no one right way or right wrong way. That's what makes RimWorld so fantastic. You can do it any way that you like, and if it works, it works. Absolutely fine. So here's the chimney. This is the last thing I'll say. This is the chimney. So we can see here now, this is, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner under where it says area revealed, it says unroofed. So these are now venting the hot air into this chimney area. More importantly, it's not open to raiders to get in and set fire to it. Raiders won't bash through a door, generally speaking, to get to the coolers. So having them behind a chimney like this works a treat. All right, there we go. We're going to leave it there. And remember, always get the AI to do your fighting for you if you can. <laughs> it's very satisfying. Thanks for watching episode 9. I'll be back with episode 10 very, very soon to talk about mods. And then that's me done for the Colony series. Colony tutorial series, even. You take care of yourself. This is Bug. Put in the plug.